Hi, my name is Cody Balvar. My group members are Saranja Anealing and Ali Sykes, and our project was about using cellulose acetate electrospun nanofibers for biosensors. So in this PowerPoint, we'll be talking about an introduction, which is what are biosensors, what are they used for, what is cellulose acetate. I'll be talking about the structure of cellulose acetate, Ali will be talking about the properties, and Saranja will be talking about the processing. So biosensors are used to detect biomolecules. They can fall into two classes. Clinical and non-clinical. Clinical meaning biomedical uses and non-clinical being biological uses. Obviously we're focused on this for our major. So there's a problem with biosensors and that is that they need to have high sensitivity, a low cost, and high accuracy. But achieving all three things at the same time are, uh, can be difficult. That's where electrospinning comes into play. Electrospinning uses electrical forces to produce polymer fibers with diameters in the nanometer to micrometer range. They make great biosensors because they're low cost, their pore size is controllable, so uh, they can, you can control the diffusion rate with them. Uh, they're very accurate and they're very sensitive, making them perfect to meet these criteria. Here is a schematic showing uh, electro, the electrospinning setup. The material we chose for our project was cellulose acetate, which is one of the earliest materials used to make fibers. It can be made through solvent casting, which is an older method, or by electrospinning, which can be used to make biosensors. To the left is just a normal uh, cellulose molecule polymer. You can see there's a hydroxyl group attached to this carbon. The difference between normal cellulose and cellulose acetate is cellulose acetate has this acetyl group right here. The structure of cellulose acetate is amorphous or non-crystalline, meaning that it has a water-like uh, structure, so it doesn't really have one. It is a linear homopolymer of D-glucose units, which means that it's a straight line of glucose monomers, which are the D-stereochemistry. And these glucose monomers are linked together by beta-1,4 glycosidic bonds. Glycosidic bonds are the bonds that join sugars together. And 1,4 means that they branch. Every, every fourth carbon, there's a new branch of the polymer. Here is the uh, carbon ring form of cellulose acetate. Here is what it looks like uh, in a scanning electron microscope. My name is Ali Sykes, and I'll be talking about the properties of cellulose acetate. Um, some of the physical properties, the average diameter of the nanofiber is 0.198 micrometers and after the fiber is made into the mat for the biosensor, it um, was about 406 micrometers. The specific surface area of the mat was 2.02 times 10 to the 7th per meter, which um, is why it such, has such a high porosity of 87% compared to something like filter paper that's like three times the um, porosity. Mechanical properties, um, the strength of the individual fiber isn't that impressive. It's only 100 um, centinewtons per millimeter squared and when it fails it has an elongation rate of 40%. After it's made into the mat, um, of course the strength goes up and it's uh, 485 centinewtons per millimeter squared and the el elongation ratio decreases to 13.97%. And this graph is the tensile stress curve of um, the cellulose acetate mat after um, it fails. You can see that the um, elongation ratio is 
Um, a couple of the chemical properties of the cellulose acetate nanofibers is it's hydrolytically stable, which just means it holds itself up in water. It won't um, chemically degrade in any way, which makes it a good choice for a biosensor since usually in biological situations there tends to be a lot of water. And um, the mats were shown to degrade between 266 and 397 degrees Celsius, uh, which makes sense because the melting temperature of cellulose acetate is 227 degrees Celsius, and which is a fine like cap for biological applications because, I mean, the human body doesn't get above 40 degrees Celsius, so it's not like there would be a problem with the degradation of the heat. Um, to the cellulose acetate fibers in a sensor. My name is Serenia and I'm going to talk about a process of cellulose nanofiber. Uh, the equipment to produce the electrospun nanofiber for biosensors are a pump, a high voltage power, a positive DC, a collector and a syringe. And the processing is the electrospunning of the cellulose acetate has caused several challenges because of its high crystalline structure. So we add acetone dimethylformide to the cellulose acetate. The concentration of the cellulose acetate is 17 weight percentage. 17 weight percentage. And then it is dissolved in two Twitch to one ratio acetate dimethyl formide, and then the Y is submerged in solution and provided 12.5 kilo volt of DC voltage. Um, the to form nanofibers, the solution is pumped to flow from the needle to form telecon. Uh, this is the telecon. The Form from the needle. It should be like uh, the angle should be 33.5 degree, um, and then the fibers that form by electro spinning have diameter diameters in the range of 40 nanometer to 2,000 nanometer, and then the fibers collected directly on a ground surface would retain acetone solvent so to overcome the difficulty we use the water bath and then uh, to all, uh, all nanofibers all nanofiber webs are air dried for 48 hours and then subject to deacetylation and then this is the final product of the cellulose acetate nanofiber and then there are three main parameters that affect cellulose acetate nanofiber. They are process parameters, solution parameters, and ambient conditions. That's all. Thank you.